Since Keir Starmer took over the Labour Party, he's been saying that it's under new management. Well, that was certainly in evidence today. Some saying that this was his big breakthrough moment, the moment that he drew a line between himself and the previous administration. Um, but I, th I think it's fair to say that in the short term, he could face a pretty sizable backlash. Um, Len McCluskey, the Unite boss, re released a statement today um, saying that this is a grave injustice if not rectified, it will cause chaos. One shadow cabinet minister texted me to say that Labour members are going to go insane. They added, we are done for. Now, both camps tonight, Keir Starmer and Jeremy Corbyn, in crisis talks uh, with senior figures. And I think all of this suggests that this is about a lot more than anti-Semitism. This is a fight for the heart and soul of the Labour Party, internal divisions that many hoped had been left behind. And we're going out there to win, OK? A year ago, he was preparing to fight an election as Labour leader. Today, Jeremy Corbyn is no longer a member of the Labour Party. How did you feel when you heard you'd been suspended from the party? Very shocked and very disappointed. I've been in the Labour Party all my life. His critics say it's been a long time coming, but it all happened very quickly, starting with the release of a damning report by the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. The report found that Labour broke equalities law on three counts, by failing to provide adequate training for those dealing with complaints, by allowing unlawful harassment and discrimination of Jewish Labour members, and through political interference in the complaints process, and we've identified serious failings in leadership and an inadequate process for handling anti-Semitism complaints. It's hard not to conclude that anti-Semitism within the Labour Party could have been tackled more effectively if the leadership had chosen to do so. That was at 10am this morning when the report was released. At 10.36, Jeremy Corbyn released a statement in which he said the scale of Labour's anti-Semitism problem had been dramatically overstated for political reasons. Half an hour later, Keir Starmer held a press conference. There are still those who think there's no problem with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, that it's all exaggerated or a factional attack. Then, frankly, you are part of the problem too. And you should be nowhere near the Labour Party either. Then at 1pm, an interview with Jeremy Corbyn aired in which he repeatedly disputed many of the report's findings. The numbers have been exaggerated in my view. I don't accept that we were harassing people. No, I did not politically interfere. I was asked for Just opinion. six minutes later, he had been suspended. I made it clear that we won't tolerate anti-Semitism or the denial of anti-Semitism uh, through the suggestion that it's exaggerated or factional. And that's why I was disappointed with Jeremy Corbyn's response. And that is why appropriate action has been taken, which I fully support. Labour wouldn't say on what grounds the action was taken, but they were keen to stress that it was the party's disciplinary unit that made the decision and not the leader. Some people are suggesting Keir Starmer has today politically interfered himself in the complaints process by stepping in and suspending Jeremy Corbyn. What do you say to that? I say that that is complete and utter nonsense. He is the leader of the Labour Party. He is not overseeing the due process. He is not overseeing the complaint process. What he has done is said on his watch, anti-Semitism is unacceptable. I am suspending you. Now there's a process and you're under investigation. Do you think there has been any political interference in the decision to suspend you? Well, it seems odd that it all happened so very quickly. What I'll be doing is appealing to the party and those that have made this decision to kindly think again. On a day that many thought would end those long-standing Labour divisions over anti-Semitism, proof that the internal fight is far from over. Well, now, one of the people who left the party because she believed anti-Semitism had not been properly dealt with was Luciana Berger. Two years ago, she was given police protection at the Labour Party conference after receiving threats. She left the party six months later, along with seven other MPs, saying she had been the victim of bullying within the party. Ms Berger took a leading role in challenging the party leader, Jeremy Corbyn, on alleged anti-Semitism and how internal complaints had been handled. I spoke to her earlier and I began by asking where she thinks her experience fits into the findings of the Commission. If I reflect on my experience, I was on the receiving end of a sustained campaign of 
intimidation, of discrimination, of anti-Semitism, uh, the volume and toxicity of which I received online was uh, uh, levels I've never experienced, particularly in the last two years that I was in the Labour Party. Um, for me, it became untenable to remain. Um, and uh, coupled with which, you know, I found myself on the receiving end of threats. I found myself um, on the receiving end of threats from someone who was a Labour Party member who uh, was convicted of those actions. It came to light that the Labour Party had been made aware of a physical threat that was made against me by a different Labour Party member, uh, but informed neither myself or the police for an extended period, only when it, was, uh, it came to light because of a leak. So there's a catalogue of things that uh, I experienced and many others experienced. I had to curtail my, uh, my movement. I wasn't able to travel freely because of the additional security precautions that I had to take as a result of which. And it didn't just impact on me, but it also had an effect on my family and my remarkable team who were often the first to hear and see many of these things. And what's your sense about Keir Starmer's reaction to the report? Well, I listen very closely to what Sir Keir Starmer said today, and it's very clear that this is the start of a very long road ahead. You know, this is not the end. Uh, certainly, it's the beginning of what needs to happen to structurally change the Labour Party and its processes, but most importantly, to amend the culture within the party. Keir has made a commitment today to undertake that. He will be judged not just on his commitments today, but on his actions. Did you feel that Keir Starmer should have resigned from the Shadow Cabinet at the time? Everyone in positions of leadership has a responsibility and, and certainly I think more could be done, uh, more could have been done by everyone in those positions of leadership, be that uh, within the shadow cabinet, be that within the parliamentary Labour Party, be that at all levels, you know, at council level as well. Now Jeremy Corbyn has been suspended, not because of what's in the report, but because of his reaction to the report. And I, and I looked at the reaction that he gave in the statement and, you know, I have no words for the lack of contrition that he chose um, to share in, in that statement. Anyone in a position of leadership or former leadership should take responsibility uh, and uh, not, as we've seen through the statement, obfuscate, seek to deflect, uh, seek to uh, denigrate the findings. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn is anti-Semitic? I call a spade a spade, and Jeremy Corbyn has made a number of different anti-Semitic comments. He's shared platforms with known anti-Semites. I can only conclude, you know, once it's a mistake, but all these countless examples, he's anti-Semitic. And overall, as a final question, what do you feel that the uh, Equalities Commission have done today? I, I think the Equalities and Human Rights Commission have, have done their job. This is what they were set up to do. Uh, it was astounding that this process even had to be initiated in the first place because the threshold, the legal threshold was met to in, undertake this investigation. Uh, it was astounding to learn that the Labour Party didn't comply and didn't engage in the process in the way that they should. Luciana Berta, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you. Well, now, Andrew Feinstein is an author and Jewish Labour Party member who was an MP under Nelson Mandela in South Africa. I spoke to him earlier and began by asking him if he regarded Jeremy Corbyn as in any way anti-Semitic. John, I've known Jeremy Corbyn through his activism against apartheid in South Africa. I've known him through his activism against the arms trade. I've seen him interact in his constituency. I have never seen any evidence of racism, of anti-Semitism, or anything closely related to it. But according to Luciana Berger, a former Labour MP, she says he has made a number of different anti-Semitic comments. He shared platforms with known anti-Semites. What's the reaction to that? John, I think if um, one looked throughout my personal and political history in being critical of the state of Israel, one occasionally might see something on social media, uh, might share a platform with somebody, all of whose views you don't necessarily support. Um, I experienced that in South Africa, fighting against apartheid. I don't think that suggests that someone is anti-Semitic. I think that one has to, what one has to do is take all of a person's statements on issues, um, and there is absolutely nowhere that I have been shown or confined 
a statement of Jeremy Corbyn's that could in any way be interpreted as anti-Semitic. I do think, John, however, that there are certain people in the Labour Party who have effectively abused the notion of anti-Semitism to attack Jeremy for his political leadership. And that, I think, is a separate matter and an unfortunate one. Is there a case for suspending Jeremy Corbyn for what he said of this commission report? In relation to the EHRC report and what Jeremy Corbyn said about it, the report explicitly allows members of the Labour Party to say exactly that. If that is not good enough for the leader of the Labour Party, he should set aside the entire report. He can't pick and choose which elements of the report suit him and which don't. With respect to the suspension of Jeremy Corbyn, the report makes absolutely clear that it is in no way offensive to comment on the scale of anti-Semitism allegations within the Labour Party, which is what Jeremy Corbyn did today. But do you worry that perhaps you will be suspended from the party uh, for saying what you've said? Frankly, John, if the Labour Party were to suspend me and claim that I in any way to contribute towards anti-Semitism, I would simply remind them that I was the first member of parliament in South Africa to introduce a motion on the Holocaust in the history of the South African parliament. I have lectured on, out at Auschwitz on genocide prevention, where my mother lost 39 members of her family. If the Labour Party would like to suspend me for supporting Jeremy Corbyn in this particular instance, I would be very happy to defend myself and my commitment to fighting anti-Semitism and all racism. Do you fear that there is a schism coming in the Labour Party? I fear that the current leader of the Labour Party, who claimed that he was elected on a ticket of seeking unity, is doing the exact opposite and is creating divisions and ignoring a significant segment of Jewish Labour Party members who are very supportive of Jeremy Corbyn. Andrew Feinstein, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks for having me.